So just a quick sound check, guys. Uh, just want to make sure that you guys can hear us. And uh, if you're having any technical issues, please log out and log back in again. Everything should be resolved on the uh, on the next login. Uh, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second annual Women Teach Trading and Investing 2020. How exciting is this? We have a full panel of all women traders and investors uh, throughout the week. Uh, it's going to be very exciting. This event is brought to you by Timing Research uh, and Trade Out Loud. David Cosmeter and I will be your host today. And with us, we have great traders. Uh, first off, we're going to kick off with Mercedes uh, Van Essen. And uh, Mercedes, you have the mic. We have been chatting a little bit back and forth uh, before the start of this session. Mercedes, you have the mic. Thank you very much, Anka, and um, well, thank you, um, you and um, David, for putting on this very exciting event. And you know, I'm really delighted to be here to be kicking it off um, after this um, truly interesting week we had um, last week. So um, I think the uh, subject I have chosen, the psychology of trading panic cycles, is you know very very apt. Couldn't be more apt. So what we're going to look at is the um, what a panic cycle is all about and this is not just necessarily about the markets and i want to go deep into this um from not just a market perspective as we, we will see anyway so okay that's me um risk disclosure on my website you can go there and um, a little bit about me which i am well you can read this if if, if um you don't know me and um, here is what we'll be discussing so we're going to first of all look at what exactly um, defines a panic cycle then we'll look at it from the astrological perspective and what comes into play here we will also look what is really happening behind the fluff and um, going into the giant illusion i'll be saying a few things which might rattle a few cages here but i just kind of felt certain things have to be said. So then we're gonna look at gold, um, silver, and the S&P, um, and we'll discuss some key strategies to reduce fear and build trading confidence. I'm gonna do an interactive um, group session with you that um, builds um, brain coherence, which I teach all my private coaching clients, and we'll do it in our group coaching as well. And if we have time, we're gonna go into the subject of the art of asking the right questions. So, okay, now, the big dream is not really what you think it is. You know, life is but a dream and you row and row your boat. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. The thing is, times are changing and they are changing because our living environment is undergoing a major evolutionary shift. I did a webinar about this recently. Some of you may have seen it. So the big super cycle, um, is um, something few in the financial world are talking about. It's business as normal, they just see it, oh, there is a bit of a correction and blah, 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 things go back to normal. However, this shift changes how you see the world and it happens with or without your conscious consent or should I be saying your conscious awareness. How you think and how you learn to trade and invest in the next 12 months has wider consequences and could impact your financial future for the next decade. It is that big and that complex. So, right, let's look at what defines panic cycles here. A panic cycle is not limited to the stock market. I have to make this absolutely clear. It is much, much more. The stock market is just one expression of what panic cycles are all, all about. So and you need to understand this um, to protect your investment and also to have um, foresight. And by the way, this is critical for shorter term strategies too. It's not just for um, your investment portfolio. Um, now, a panic cycle typically only becomes apparent to the public at approximately 50% into the cycle. And this is precisely what we are witnessing um, in, in to, today's um, environment. Um, typically, reactions occur toward the end of the cycle. 
um, and um, indicators of coming panic, panic cycles are always the much, much larger chart, chart structures. We have to look at the monthly charts and um, we have to look at the larger market correlations. I am not talking about intraday correlations or even correlations of the daily chart. We have to go much, much wider and look at the correlations and of course the breakdown of, of correlations as, as well. So just looking, for example, at the S&P, because this is what you trade um, intraday, tells you very little about common market crashes. It, it does, in, in a sense, um, if, if you look at um, the, the changing price action, I know a lot of traders have got problems with this, following on an in short-term intraday chart and um, not getting lost in the minutiae of, of the market action. So and that's why it really is absolutely vital that you have in mind with whatever you trade and whatever your time frame is, that you have in mind the larger, much, much bigger picture because it helps you to put the shorter term action into perspectives. And you can detect it. Detect, you will know when you have to throttle back and start to become cautious. Um, so if you know beyond how to look beyond the news, and that is also a strategy looking beyond the news, because there is basically way too much misinformation out. There is misinformation out about the coronavirus. There is misinformation out about 5G. Um, and once you understand how to decipher this, you will have a much better clue of what we are dealing with and you will have it much much sooner um, this has not developed overnight what we are seeing here this has been on the cards well i would say possibly for about um, three months or so um, so if you just look well if you had looked at company earnings not just in the States. If you looked at company earnings from um, British companies, if, if you are um, trading the um, English markets or you know, some of the European markets, um, correlations these days are so intertwined, no market acts in isolation. But if you had looked at earnings, at sentiment, and understood how to tune into all the, the overall energetic feel, um, of life in general, you know, into the astrology side of things, for example, into the socio-economic side of things. Well, certainly from December last year, at the very latest, you would have known that some big surprise, which really isn't a surprise, you know, was brewing. Uh, you know, the thing is, we don't know how these um, surprises, where they come from, what falls off a cliff. You know, this is a typical ending diagonal behavior in you know elliotician terms if you like now let's look at the wider astrological picture here i want to make this absolutely clear we are not concerned with the um, daily or even weekly astrology here it's it's in many ways meaningless because larger cycles are larger energy and large energy filters through to everything so and in that sense astrologic um, astrology has got meaning so um, as, as you know if you have followed me you know we've we've had the big apex of the 25,920 year so big big maxi super cycle for the want of a better word and there is the confluence of many smaller degree cycles which are going on at the moment and they will continue to be in place for um, the next um, approximately three to four years. It's, it's hard to be very, very definite on this because energy works in such a way, you know, it, it sends out, if you like, a shadow before it comes into full, full effect. And then you have the shadow period once the, the full effect is finished, finished. So in other words, there is no uh, clearly definable beginning or clearly definable end. But what we do know, what we could see just by looking at the larger astrological influences, that there is more volatility on the cards, big shifts and unexpected events are on the cards. Why? The Aquarius and the Uranus influences 
which are going to be with us for the next two years have, have kicked in. You know, it's as simple as that, you know, they have kicked in. The focus, incidentally, is on electricity and technology and obviously ad hoc events in, in this field. And we have already seen this um, with the coronavirus. We can't, can't go, go into this um, here. Now, the Chinese year of the rut spells caution with the financial matters. And also from the Chinese horoscope perspective, we are at the beginning of a 12 12 year astrological cycle. So the influence is what's coming in this year will be felt for the next 12 years. On March the 23rd, Saturn returns into Aquarius. And that is the start of the next 20 year cycle, 23, 24 year cycle. Uh, it's big um, and it ushers in the Aquarian frequency. Um, now, Saturn with Aqu Aquarius destabilizes the old order of things, and um, that will be dominant until approximately March um, 23. So basically, you know, um, it's, it's a big, big cycle here we, we, we are looking at. So um, Saturn returns briefly to the master degrees of Capricorn from um, July to um, December. So, um, you know, hopefully we're going to see a little bit um, of um, calm, you know, and order in the sense, you know, we can do a bit of hard work and be perhaps a little bit more um, sy systemic um, in our approach. So, um, you know, but who knows? It's it's hard to say because of all, all the um, larger, bigger cycles um, which are all around us. Um, so in December, um, solstice is on the 21st, obviously. Um, uh, Jupiter conjuncts with Saturn at zero, zero degree Aquarius for the first time in centuries. So this is big. This is ushering the new energy in, which comes from the um, 25,920 year big super cycle. So in other words, it's all about change, 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 change in all areas of life. Um, now, and here is the thing you know, to speak with Nietzsche. And those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. I mean, I, I really had a, a true sense of this over the last few months when, when I said to my traders, caveat, caveat, caveat. And um, a few thought clearly Mercedes is being stupid, but okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm used to this. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard, you know, when people think you are stupid and sort of you are, you know, the lone wolf out there and in the end you shut up, you know. So um, anyway, so, um, well, okay, you think panic causes market moves. And I want you to re-examine this point of view here. So get this, everything you see basically is planned well in advance. And it, it's a bigger complex interplay that is directed by different forces with different agendas. It's not just about the markets. The markets are a pawn in a bigger game. And the aim is to control and transfer capital from the masses to a bigger agenda. Um, so now, for now, let's just say this. It's about much, much more than taking money from you, the small trader, and putting money into the pockets of a bigger trader. And, you know, when you get this and understand this and seek out the information to, to you know, which will show you that, you know, I'm not making this stuff up, um, you will automatically become a little bit more care careful and cautious at times when you need to be careful. So the strategies, by the way, I'm talking about, they are used everywhere, not just in the financial markets. Um, in essence, the markets are huge manipulation vehicle because so many people think they can make a killing from it and you know they don't have to be properly educated i mean let's face it you know the brokers are doing it you know the software providers um you know tell you all this and um you know people fall in, in still fall into the same trap so um but really what we are saying is this by the time the general public panics the deal is done and in the markets at that point the buy orders are in 
I know, I mean, you don't need to worry about this. The buy orders have been in already for quite some time and the market panic from the larger um, traders perspective, you know, it's just confirmation. Hey, you know, we are on track. Um, so basically it is not blind exuberance that um, drives panics, but blind stupidity. So when you, we look at it superficially, um, when everybody has bought, the music stops. Well, superficially, of course, this is true. But in an environment where the big players print money at will all the time, or when, whenever it's needed, because they know it is the money is just a farce, it's, it's not real, you know, it's just a means of control, uh, this whole point of view, you know, everybody buys until nobody can buy, it's nonsense. It is just not right. And you've got to learn to look behind superficial appearances here. I mean, this is very much where we are going. This is the new energy we are dealing with. So get this, there is never a shortage of bias underneath the superficial construct of the markets you know the markets is a construct like your reality is a construct and underneath this is something else so um, and with that said though I certainly believe that every trader and investor for that matter should learn auction market principles you know because we are dealing also here with energy you know there are many different layers um, to, the, to this thing um, so um, Whatever time frame you are trading, you should know, know the principles of, of um, auction market theory. So the real money is made only when you develop foresight, never when you just are reactive. Foresight comes from, truth, comes from three things. Intuition, deeper understanding of what goes on underneath the structure, and of course, emotional regulation, which means being fearless, being aware and having the ability or to be flexible. And if you are fearless and aware, you will be flexible. So now let's have a quick look at gold and silver. I did say, I don't know, some of you may have seen um, um, our, um, you know, my um, comments on, on Monday in the multi-speaker event um, of um, where we are looking at the um, weekly sentiment. Now, I have been cautious of gold for a long time. Um, and from a longer term perspective, I actually did say, you know, okay, let's try and buy some gold here with a view to hold. I think we bought some somewhere in here, actually. Now, I mean, I was wrong. I did not expect this, but okay, so it happened. So, you know, we had to be patient. You know, we were not, not in the market very very big you know i am a, a big proponent of trading small and when you can have confirmation well you can add to your position again small you know you don't risk the ranch on any single trade I, and i don't care if you only trade as i you know i i like to trade gold and i am um, trade um, the indices um, I, I, I like to trade Russell by the way so um, I prefer Russell over the um, S&P um, so um, but here okay it was becoming clear you know that this was going on for a longer time now we know with a degree of certainty you know we, we've got an eBay um, an, a B wave pretty much complete and I am looking for the time being that we are going to get down quite you know sort of be possibly below these lows it is on the cards this is not a bullish chart and i did say on monday when i look at silver you know silver has not moved i mean these are monthly charts we are looking at the very big picture this is not to say that we cannot make money on an up move and um Oh, you know, over the next few days or maybe a week or so, as I say, the bigger picture, the bigger picture is not bullish. Silver has not played ball. It's, it's not bullish. I mean, silver is very, very bearish. Does this mean we cannot make money on a daily chart or intraday? Of course not. But know what we are trading from the bigger picture here. So um, this is, this has normally silver, precedes gold it has not done this 
it's flatlining. It's flatlining for a long, long time. And that has made me cautious of gold all along. I, you know, I just did not, not want to be in this, in, in any, um, yeah, I did not want to be fully invested in it. And I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong. I'm just telling you, you know, how it has been from my perspective. Now, okay, ES, hoorah, we now know, because it was very difficult here to figure out what was going on. Was this, you know, sort of a complete um, five wave move up? Well, okay, now, I mean, hindsight is always great. Well, we know it was, I mean, you know, the short was sort of here at, at some point, you know, stuff. And um, from my perspective, what I see, this is not complete. It has potentially quite a bit lower to go. Um, certainly, um, for now, the this 28 area is possible. It could go potentially quite a big, big quite a bit lower. And then, you know, obviously there will be a, a, a rally. So this, what we are seeing here, could go on for a few months with a lot of vol volatility in intraday. There, there'll be certainly um, opportunities, but I think we need to be very, very careful. Right, okay. So consciousness basically is the leader of everything. But... Um, we have to differentiate this a little bit. So natural cycles, as we look at the markets thinking, you know, these, you know, it's all natural. No, it's not. Um, these natural cycles are created by the collective consciousness. And, you know, they have a little bit of help from a few who know the laws better than you and I. So in a nutshell, the universe, as we see it, has observed itself into cyclical existence. You know, that is really the truth underneath the more su superficial truth. I mean, if you can get this, you know, I mean, you're doing awfully well. I know, you know, I'm hitting you with a lot of deep stuff here. Okay, so you, the individual trader, are obviously a tiny observer. You are like, like you know, tiny wincy ant looking at the elephant and you're gonna just see, you know, wincy thing and you think, oh, wow, this is interesting. You know, you have no idea. Um, so in this world, this world we are living in, panic doesn't, drive markets. Let me be absolutely clear about it. Panic does not drive markets. Um, there is a systematic manipulation of the collective consciousness and that creates panic of the unaware market participants over long periods. It's done over long periods. It doesn't suddenly develop and the whole thing falls off, off a cliff. That is the biggest illusion out there. This trick, guys, is thousands of years old, and it started, for the best of my knowledge, with the Babylonian money system, and uh, which obviously is still in operation today. It may have started before that. So, okay, beware confirmation bias. It is con the conditioned mind that operates inside of you. The reality beyond the conditioned mind is not what you think of it. So, um, and um, we have um, normalcy bias from a neural perspective. You know, this is how the mind works and it's been abused by um, the larger powers everywhere. Caveat emptor. So, okay. Now, the thing we have been told from a trading perspective, trade the trend, trade the trend, trade with the trend, you know, trade pullbacks. Well, I tell you something, if you had stepped in front of this market, you would have gotten very, very, very badly pummeled over the last 10 days. So um, it is not as simple as that. Yes, patterns repeat, but patterns also break down. And I saw this morning, um, Anka sent a very interesting um, thing about how quickly markets are um, moving down and the speed has accelerated. Now I've talked to you about the energies speeding up in, in the last um, the webinar um, we did, the last two or three webinars I've done, I've talked about this. And what, what Anka put out there is, uh, you know, it's perfect um, illustration. I mean, here rests my case. 
Um, okay, hello Heisenberg, the uncertainty principle, um, wonder how much you know about this. So let's look at this from the perspective of the panic and your brain. So um, of course Heisenberg's um, uncertainty principle plays out in your brain. From a neuro perspective, we know that the mind has an elaborate system to fool you. We can't go into this here. Um, but let me just say, when you are angry, because the internet again is playing up, I had a lot of this over the last two weeks, by the way, yeah, it's okay now, um, the super free, superficial reaction, your anger with the internet not working, has nothing to do with what you think and what you are reacting to. And this is, in a way, the Heisenberg principle playing out. There is always an element you have not accounted for because you look at things how they are superficial, superficially. And the superficial view causes glitches in your perception. And that is a basic neuroscience 101. The same is true, of course, for your reactions to the markets. Your mind loves, loves confirmation, it loves routine, and above all, it loves certainty. And that is why people buy at tops. It's not because they are exuberant, you know, they just buy because it feels so nice. You know, you know let, let's go in there. It's worked and look, we now have proof it works. Let's do a bit more of it. So whenever the unexpected happens, the mind reacts to the thing that is what it sees as the obvious cause. The internet breaks down, you are angry with the breakdown of the internet. The conclusion is this, that unlike what... Um, the press makes you think and you read it everywhere. There is no uh, direct correlation between external events and market panic. And I could prove this to you if we were to go through the um, his historic charts going back a hundred years. Um, so who leads? Your consciousness or the market consciousness? I mean, this is an interesting question. Now, the human being, of course, and that's your conditioned mind, is driven by limitation and survival fears. And that concept, of course, is a false understanding of how the universe really works. Um, now, put simply, if you could be at the leading edge of thought instead of being at the receiving end of thought, like most of you are, you would have control over consciousness. Maybe not the collective, but certainly over your, yours. And that means you could manage your trading and investing with foresight and a deeper confidence, no matter what cycle the market is in. You'd know when to stay out and you would have the conviction to stick to your guns. I'm not saying that you'll catch every move, you won't. I certainly don't catch every move, but I can sleep at night, you know, and it'll stop you from losing big. Um, so new thinking is mandatory and here is why yeah every step along the way your consciousness is manipulated i mean that that is just a fact you know what is is peddled as true is mostly misinformation you absolutely got to get this so the world you see is fabricated for you so that other players can fulfill their agendas not to make your money to make them money to keep them in you know whatever um when you buy, for example, let's take yeah, pharmaceutical stocks, tech stocks, military stocks. I mean, these are the biggest candidates here. Um, you are unwittingly keeping that reality alive. So the problem is, well, actually, there isn't really a problem if it is just money over matter at all cost. So, you know, that's a choice. Right. Normalcy bias, beware. The mind is trapped in the past and in the perception of never ending trends. Hence, it keeps doing what it's always doing. Now, this is what's happening at the moment cycle. You know, this is why a lot of people will have lost money um, in, in the last um, couple of weeks or so. You know, but it's, it's the end of a game for now because we said it before you, uh, Aquarius and you, Uranus are entering the stage, and that makes for big and swift and unexpected changes. Now, on the whole, people are decent beings, but they are ignorant of what really drives life 
in, in our world, that has got to be said. It's, it's a subject I dis, discuss a lot in, in, in the Buddhist, Buddhist trader. I go in, into deep details in, into this. The Buddhist trader is being you know, relaunched. I have spent the last three weeks basically completely rewriting the book. So um, um, it'll be relaunched next week. Um, in the Buddhist trader, I compare the markets to the alpha male. So what is the alpha male? male. He has got weight because the entire force of a very dense consciousness um, has forced a certain worldview into being which the innocent masses um, you know, are buying into. You know, and that has happened until now. But the, the big picture is, is beginning to change. It's still in place, but it's also changing. And that's the difficulty. So the in innocence and the ignorance of the collective, of course, unwittingly keep the game for longer afloat than it you know might otherwise be 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 there so um the system of course is unsustainable and will s change because of this planetary con um, con um, configuration here aquarius and uranus sooner than we think you know it's, it's, it's on the cards in the meantime of course everybody plays until the music stops so let's talk about the coronavirus behind the coronavirus guys there is 5g now 5g is electricity um we as individuals at least have the answer to the challenges so panic not yeah you know, you know there, there are means and ways of dealing with this we can't go into this here now now the solution this is what we are going into now is correct thinking all in capital letters for a reason instead of collective thinking and it all begins with that so our survival depends on seeing beyond the facade so your job as an aware human being you are first and foremost a human being of course and then a trader is basically to grow up and take responsibility and i know you probably don't want me to say this but i'm saying it anyway so it means in plain and simple terms that you must know how your brain works. You must know how the universe really works, not how you want it to work, how it really works. And that means how reality works. Markets don't get overextended because people stop buying. You know, that, that is just the, the reality behind the reality. You know, they don't uh, get overextended because people are greedy, that's nonsense. Um, normalcy bias makes people repeat familiar patterns in a bid to feel safe. We, we said this before, it's Neuroscience 101. Markets get overextended um, because it is recognized that there are certain conditions that make it easy to turn the market. As I said, it's an agenda. Greed and exuberance basically are a myth. Ignorance and innocence create capital and wealth transfers by design get that okay so how do we go behind the um, perception well first of all you have to learn uh, brain coherence and we, we're gonna um, do a, a little group session in a moment you have to learn to think correctly and move beyond fear if you learn to think correctly you can move beyond fear and that opens the door to inner certainty intuition independent inner vision and then you will know what's right for you and for your unique trading personality because everybody is different so okay here is the special offer um i'll just briefly talk about this and then we are going to do a little bit of group work so very quickly um it's only available here it's not on my website um, i've decided to give you a bit of a trial if you like for a month in the awaken the inner master trader and what we do there we talk about all these things we have just talked about and we go into much more details and we do group work together and we look at your individual issues and we answer questions and it, it, it's quite in depth um and um, really um, very enlightening and, and great fun and I, I think you you will get a lot from it and it'll help you a lot moving forward into um the in into this um 
very, very interesting um, market environment with more confidence. You will also get, not this week, in 10 days or so, the Buddhist trader, but in e e uh, um, email um, format, the completely rewritten um, um, book. And, um, you know, the price is um, for this is $179. If you want to buy it, go to my website and um, go in, onto the contact form and um, put in summit offer. Or you can send me um, an email, which is, you know, on, on the next page here. Now, let's do some group work here. And we are going to um, do a little mini meditation. And this mini meditation will give you an experience what you can do, because it's about directing energy. And you will see here how you, the individual, can learn to direct energy. What this does, it'll give you the confidence that you can be operating without being at the mercy of your emotions. You do not have to do anger, you do not have to do fear, and you do not have to do overwhelm. The thing is, is it a one day wonder? No, but it can be done. You, you can learn it. I mean, this is what all my work is about, giving you confidence and ultimately giving you power. So to do this, um, I would appreciate it if you were to talk, take your shoes off. Um, the reason being, um, without shoes, you ground better. I, by the way, never ever sit in front of my computer with, with my shoes on. Always have my shoes off. And um, it's also a good idea to take watches off. And um, so I'll just give you a moment to do this. This meditation will take, well, you know, we'll see where it's, it's going to take us. So what we are going to do, we're going to start with a very simple but conscious breathing exercise. And here we are using, if you like, force, because we are breathing very, very deeply, and you are doing it very consciously. And um, then I'm going to ask you to place your focus on certain parts of your body. And then I'm going to ask you to take your focus beyond your body. And what that does when you have convergent focus and alternate it with divergent focus, you bring your brain into harmony. And you may not immediately feel this if this is the first time of doing this. Just, just go along with this. You will get the hang of it. So we'll do this and then I'm going to take you through a figure eight process. And the figure eight process is just like you're wearing, if you're wearing glasses, imagine you are making in your inner vision a figure eight. You are crossing over the bridge of your nose and you know, um, go over to the left and back to the right. Again, don't get hung up on doing this correctly or following me to the letter. It is not necessary. It is about shifting energy here. And, and your focus is just to go along with it and allow whatever wants to happen to happen. That's all you need to do. Okay, let's begin. And by the way, close your eyes. It'll be better because it'll help you, you to move beyond the um, external senses. We don't want to focus externally. We are bringing our focus inside now. And we are going to do this now by focusing on our bodies and bring your attention to the Hara point, that is the belly button area, approximately, well, let's say two inches around the belly button area for now. And we are going to breathe very slowly and consciously and deeply into that area. Starting now, breathe in slowly and a bit deeper and deeper if you can. And hold that breath and exhale, allowing the energy in the body to leave completely. And again, focus on the solar plexus, breathe in slowly and deeply into that energy center. 
and deeper still and hold the energy, hold it a little bit longer and exhale, letting all the energy leave the body. It's re renewing energy, that's what we are doing here. And let's do it once more. Breathe in very deeply and very slowly into the solar plexus, the navel area. And a bit deeper and a bit deeper still. Hold the energy there and exhale, letting every single particle of air leave your body. The intention is to become more energy and more matter, uh, less matter, I mean. And let's do it once more. Breathing in deeply into the Hara point, into the solar plexus, the navel area. And go a bit deeper, hold that energy there, hold it a little bit longer, and exhale. And become aware how your body already feels different. There is more energy and less matter. And now I want you to bring your attention to the heart center. You may want to put your left hand on the heart center. Become aware of the energy in the center of your heart, right in the center. And now imagine this energy expand gradually beyond your body, beyond your shoulders. It expands to the side, to the front, and behind you, and it expands into the ground. Feel that energy. And now bring your attention to your feet. The feet hold many important neurostimulation points. Feel the energy of your left toe. And now feel the energy of your right toe. You may feel a little tingling. And now feel the energy of your entire left foot. And feel the energy of your entire right foot. Feel the ground below your feet. It's grounding. And now I want you to bring your attention to the area, the top of the bridge of your nose, if you're wearing glasses, just where your glasses rest. It's the direct connection to the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. Just bring your focus there. And now let's imagine with our inner vision a figure eight. We can start from the bridge of the nose, go over to the left. Notice how your eyes roll over just like you are following the um, contours of your glasses. Coming back to the bridge of the nose, going over to the right side. Making a figure eight on the right side over the, the bridge of the nose to the left side. Allow yourself to get into the rhythm. Again, back to the center of the bridge of the nose, cross over to the right, roll over back to the bridge of the nose, over to the left. Let's put a color in here, blue. Feel blue, 
back to the, the um, bridge of the nose, cross over to the right, establish a rhythm. Just allow the figure eight to run of its own accord. See the color blue. Let it roll over from left to right, from right back to left, and make it bigger. Expand it about a foot or so beyond your head. Become aware how your energy is changing, how the brain feels sort of calmer, sort of kind of a comfortable, sort of a soothing feeling. Keep going, just let it roll. Become aware how this energy is also connecting to the heart space. Just keep rolling your eyes, bring the figure eight, just become aware of the heart connection. Sure, at least some of you can feel it because I can feel it here, tuning into the energies. And now, as we are bringing this little meditation to an end, I want you to bring your attention to your hands and rub your hands together. That integrates the energies deeper into your body. That set the intention on to create a new neural pathway, one for calm and peace and healing. Blue, the energy of healing and harmony in your training. Rub your hands together. And when you're ready, open your eyes and replace the index fingers on the thumbs, the middle fingers on the thumbs, the ring finger on the thumbs, and the little fingers on the thumbs. So, right, so that was the um, little bit of a taster to show you what we can do in meditation. Of course, we do it for longer normally and to go deeper. And it's a wonderful exercise you can do before you start trading or whenever you feel you are getting nervous or you are in overwhelm, the market does something you didn't expect or, you know, when you just have to basically regroup. Um, let's briefly talk. I mean, we still got a little bit of time. So let's talk about languaging. And by languaging, I mean how you talk to yourself because your, your inner self-talk is energy and it has a direct impact on your overall energy matrix. In other words, how you feel and how you feel determines ultimately how you act, whether you take this trade or whether you don't take this trade, um, whether you are being pulled into the collective energy in the markets or whether you can follow your plan and be completely you know, dispassionate even though everybody else is doing something completely different from you. Um, you can learn this and your inner self-talk is one of the major tools that helps you to learn this. So it begins by asking questions. Why? Because when we know what questions to ask it's about asking the correct question the right type of question of course we are in a way bypassing the middleman who um, wants the middleman is the the critical part of the mind that thinks oh well no this can't work oh i must do this because everybody else is doing it oh you know i'm going to jump in here it can only go in this direction blah 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 so um, this is about learning to go into the subconscious part of the mind. And what we do is we ask questions like, why I am doing the right thing in the markets? So what is it I am not seeing that if I were to see it, 
would auto automatically guide me to the right type of trade for me. What is it, what I am missing, that is stopping me from trading my system, how I should be trading it? Am I tuning into my energies or am I tuning into the collective fear energy? Am I operating from higher perspective or am I operating from the denser collective of the alpha male? Am I operating from the heart, meaning whatever I'm doing here, is it good for me, or am I on an emotional runaway train? Now, these are the questions. If you can learn to ask yourself those questions, you will be amazed what a difference it makes. There is another thing I want to um, share with you, and that's breathing. The moment we get anxious, we start breathing very, very shallowly. You know, it's, it's just a physical reaction. It's just how we sit in front of the screen. You know, the moment we are into fight or flight, you know, you, you crunch together. You are not sitting relaxed in front of the screen. So these are all things you, you need to learn how to do. Am I in, in rhythm with the markets? Am I in rhythm with the rhythm of the earth? very, very important because, you know, there are different kinds of rhythms. If you are in rhythm with the earth, you will be detached, you will be in harmony. You know, if, if your spine um, is aligned with the spine of the earth, you will be in alignment and you will not be on a runaway um, freight train um, that takes you into losing I don't know, 10% of your trading capital in, in, in a couple of trades or whatever. You see, it's, it's all about developing this awareness. Ultimately, and um, I think um, this is perhaps the biggest thing I can give you here in summing up everything we have uh, discussed here. And that is, there is no right or wrong. You know, from a higher perspective, right or wrong doesn't exist so let's not go there and whatever we have discussed is just to give you a deeper broader perspective of um, of life and trading life and you know the forces we are dealing with so do whatever you do do it with awareness it's not what you do but how you do it and awareness is your tool that will ultimately give you control because in the final analysis, there isn't anything else. So I think we have got a few minutes. Um, I don't know if there are any questions and I'm not sure how to look at them. Um, chat here, is that it? Do we need to look at this? Do we have any questions? Uh, no, there's not any questions yet, but no. uh, yeah, for everyone listening, if you have any questions, just type it into the chat room right now or the chat panel. Well, actually, I'd like okay. to say one thing here um, in concluding this. I know that there is a lot of um, material in this webinar. I strongly recommend that you listen to it again, because one of the things that happens when we are um, exposed to um, some stuff for the first time, the mind will only take in a very, very small percentage of what, what it sees and what it hears. And in going there for the second time, you'll be amazed how much more you can take in. And this is why we did, um, you know, these, uh, the, the little exercise, you know, because it, it'll help you, it'll show you what is possible and what you can do with your, with your brain if you are willing to train your mind. I mean, of course, ultimately that is a choice. You know, everybody is different. I am not saying you have to go there. What I am saying though is this, it'll help you tremendously in um, you know, basically leading an easier life 
and not being at the mercy of what's going on around us. So how is what's happening currently adding to the fear factor? Um, well, this is basically a, um, it's a control issue. Humans like to be in control. And when something is uncertain, and when you read the media at the moment about you know, pretty much anything, um, it, um, you see, it, it creates fear because you, you read a headline, what, what did we have here in the UK? You know, I don't know, with the coronavirus. Okay, you cannot go to your surgery if you have um, um, been to Singapore or whatever. So you read this the automatic reaction, even if you don't read the article, is, oh my God, oh my God. And you may not be consciously aware of this in that moment, because what does the mind do? The mind operates through filters. The mind switches it off and says, ah, um, oh, I've got to go and buy some apples and pears instead. You know, this is just, I mean, it, it's, it may sound a little bit extreme, but once you become aware of the inner workings of your mind, you learn how, how the, the, oper the operating system operates. That, that's the whole point of becoming more aware of what goes on. And that in turn then allows you to choose your thoughts rather than being at the mercy of every single thought that runs in the background of your mind and unwittingly creates fear without your conscious awareness. By the time you are fully aware of fear, that's obviously the panic, one heck of a lot of stuff has been going on before that. You know, fear, panic in particular, does not happen overnight. And I try to give you a, an understanding of how it is systematically created um, because if you have a weakness, there is somebody there who will know how to exploit your weakness. So what we have to do is use the tools we have, and that is basically our, our minds, um, to learn to think correctly. Thinking correctly you know, is asking the right kind of questions because it initiates an increased um, cognitive awareness. And that in turn allows us to direct our focus into the areas which are conducive instead of um, to areas which are constructive to our trading and um, to our, if, if you like, to, to anything else we do in life. You know, these principles and um, why it's highly, highly important for trading and um, cons being consistent in your trading returns, it applies to life in general. So I think this would bring my um, presentation to an end here. So you Thank have you. the special offer you can um, look at. I'll just...